Hello. In this short video, we're going to look at the new Certify Results API. So when you install Certify 11, you'll see there's a new Certify Results API. There's also a Swagger spec that shows you details about it. I'm going to look at two specific queries. One is the get method to retrieve Certify Results, and the other is to retrieve a failed or aborted steps. Now, managers are usually most interested in what happened yesterday or what happened over the last couple weeks. So with the new results API, you can have an API token that lets you point to a project and a different uh, results folder and then do a query and get back all this great JSON data explaining what passed, what failed, how many steps were used, and so forth. So really helpful for management who wants to get a high level picture of what's going on. Now, from the actual QA author perspective, or the people who are running the processes, they have a little different view. And many times, they don't care what passes. They're very interested in what failed. So we have a very similar query, but in this case, the step results um, will actually show you the failed steps. So I can do my project channel, look at my daily, and when I run that, what happens is I get all the rich JSON data, but it's just the failed steps. Okay. So we found many customers want to get this type of data out of Certify, but they want it to be like well-organized, uh, or the term is denormalized, so it's easy to use in a reporting tool. What I've done is I've actually um, pointed to these queries with Microsoft Power BI. So this is the free Microsoft Power BI that I downloaded, and you can see it'll give me a table view of the data itself. So this is all of the results. If I go to my graphical view, I simply put in a pie chart that shows how many tests passed or failed, and I've got the numbers and percentages. So from the management perspective, I can see what's going on and am I happy with this release. And it looks like this wasn't such a good build. We've got a lot of aborts. So, you know, this is definitely not done done or ready for customer consumption. Now, there's a different question when it comes to, okay, what did fail? What aborted? I mean, if I have a large end end process where I go from sales and sales to sales and distribution to demand planning, all those different parts of the manufacturing process, well, how do I know which one had errors in it? Is it in the warehouse management? Is it in the distribution? Is it the tax calculation service? That mean time to identification, what's wrong, is something that's really hard to do with um, a lot of testing tools but not with Certify. Within a reporting API, what I can actually show you, and I've taken the same data from the second query here, and I've visualized it, I can show you by application what are the windows that have failed. So in my sales application, it's the query selected pr client product, and then these three objects are what are failing. For the allocations or for comments, I can actually see the specifics of what's failing. In the scheduler or in the demand planner, I can see those things. Now, the nice thing is I can actually um, highlight and find out which buttons are not working, so it's easy to go live touch and solve them. But I can also do the reverse. I can actually highlight an error and say, okay, did this error happen across multiple parts of my application? So this lets me slice and dice my errors back and forth and look at my windows. I've done the same thing with an object view. I actually want to look at my application, but instead of Windows, I'm going to get my object details, and then my information here is the window. So I've reversed that. Now, this is all great because it allows me to figure out for a number of failures in a period of time, what parts of my end in process, is it scheduling, demand planning, sales, production options, operation of what's failing, and identify which part needs to resolve first. Now, the one thing I haven't showed you is how do you relate, relate this back to the test? So... It, this is the Microsoft Power BI. I'm going to put a, oop, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to unhighlight that. I'm going to click card. I'm going to put a new card here. Now, what I want to do is I want to put some data on that card. Now, what you'll notice is this is all the information about the fail processes, the process attributes, the record sets, the data, all those things. Now, we've no, denormalized this so it's very easy to query drag and drop the process name so I now I know the actual process that failed so if you think about easy search if I know the name of the process it's really easy to go determine that um, maybe another thing I'm interested in is I want to drop a card and actually get the primary key what's the process ID so all I have to do is drag that 
and drop it on, I can find a process that way. So what we've done specifically is created nice RESTful APIs for you to visualize your data. It makes it very quick and easy to identify what's gone wrong. I can point on an error and find out what processes are being affected and those type of things. And the nice thing is it makes it very quick and easy to do mean time to identification for what failed, which applications and what part of the applications are there. And of course, mean time to resolution solving that most of you know it's very easy to use the object touching and live touch to go resolve objects um, or if it's new data you need you can enter those in your record sets. So we really feel this is providing a dramatic shift on how quickly you can maintain your automation and figure out is there system errors, or is it process changes, data changes, or actually application changes. Hope you enjoy using the new APIs.